Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Square Eyes Syndrome Podcast. I'm Ben Gilman. I'm joined, as always, by Tom Hill. Hey. And Troy Salmon. What's up? <laughs> Sorry, I nearly choked on my chewing gum. Anyway, how are you guys doing anyway? Doing good, doing good. Just finished Yeah, not too bad, man. About to do it. Yeah, you're doing what? Do this. Okay, I thought you were doing something. <laughs> <laughs> we know what you're going to try. No, no, no. no. X-ray, X-ray. Can't say on this podcast. Uh, <laughs> oh. Okay, so who's going first? I think that should be me this week. It is, yeah. Okay. You know now, my first pick. Now, I know I've got a reputation going on this podcast. Oh, Lord. Oh, the band don't do it. So... I'm just going to say his name, and we're all going to deal with it. I've watched the, Ru- the RuPaul <laughs> drama, Adrian the Queen. <laughs> okay. It's not Drag Race, okay? I-, I wouldn't bring up Drag Race again, okay? Because I feel like everyone's had... I've had the amount of piss-taking feedback from friends and family about that. Because they listen to the podcast. So what I've decided, I've d- I have changed my tact on it. So wow. this is basically, so obviously RuPaul plays a character called Ruby Red. Um, his character's name, I don't know, but I'm just going to call him RuPaul. Feeling a bit lazy today. Um, we join him, well, the first episode very quickly. He's basically a drag queen who's about to leave the New York drag scene and open up his own drag club. He saved up a lot of money with his gay boyfriend. Then I said, well, I said gay boyfriend, his boyfriend. Um, and he's about to do that. And then he finds out that his boyfriend is a scam artist who has taken all of his money because they had shared credit cards. Um, okay. All right, this is all going on. There's a kid um, whose house, he lives above him and his uh, mum has left him because they've lost the flat because of eviction because she's a drunk, junkie prostitute. We don't know where she is at the moment. She's gone off to go and do things. Yeah. And at first you think the, girl, the boy is a, uh, the kid's a boy, but then you find out it's a girl, AJ, hence the name AJ and the Queen. So they decide um, uh, RuPaul, Ru, RuPaul um, character decides, hey, I'm going across America. And on the way, he's going to go and take her to see her father um, in Texas. So okay. for a while, the, um, the, get the boyfriend, um, obviously because they tip the police off to him, have decided to try and follow them and try and stop them. And the problem with the show, well, there's two ways to see it. Okay. If you're looking for a serious drama, it's not that. It's really funny, but it's very cheesy, but it's very funny. How do I say this? Um, the kid's kind of sweary, um, and the bad guys are really comedy goofs. At first, I was trying to take it as a drama, but I've decided to take it as a really funny comedy instead it's not the greatest thing in the world but it's um it's got that cheesy american stuff that british people find so sickening uh quick question it's, yeah what is it actually supposed to be is it supposed to be a comedy is it supposed to be yeah. a drama it a dark comedy it has, it's, a, it's a comedic drama is that but how the it bad describes guy, itself though is that how you're describing it yeah, yeah. But, I'm calling it. It tries to be dramatic at some times, but it's more of a light-hearted, feel-good show. So, then you can enjoy it for that and respect it for that. And obviously, because me and my wife are big RuPaul fans, there's obviously, at every drag club, there's a Spot the Drag Race superstar. So, it's, it's like a bingo game, really, isn't it? You know, because obviously I'm a Drag Race veteran at this point. So, yeah, it's a case of... Oh, hold on a second. Who's that? Oh, it's that one. Okay. This is it's, it's a fun game if you're a long term fan of the drag race like me. And um, I'll give props to RuPaul. It's, he's a good actor. He's funny, but you can see that from his TV show. Um, 
my wife hates the kid. Um, went so far to say it's the kid should be aborted. That the person playing okay, the kid harsh. should have yeah. been. You know, the character, she's not a very good character. She doesn't learn anything. She's just a horrible child that steals everything. She's not a good character. Um, but the rest of it, um, it's not bad. I wouldn't say it's amazing, but you could do a lot worse. Could have been shorter, though. It felt like they could have told the story in six episodes instead of ten. Um, okay. It's good. I mean, it's not bad, but I am beginning to... A uh, quick message to Netflix. You don't need to have 400 different people shows. He's overexposed. Um, there's skin... Yeah, but they do that to everybody. Yeah, yeah but always, noticeably, there's now celebrity drug races too much now. Calm it down a bit on the report because I'm beginning to turn on him because there's too much of it. But anyway, that's my first pick. Um, second pick, I finally got around to watching this somehow. Um, fun fact we were going to do a top three list of Empire Pilot TV top TV characters of all time. Top 30. Number one was Fleabag, which I thought that's a bit weird. You know, that's a new character. How is she the best of all time? So I decided to watch the show. Um, okay. Okay. So I've, started, I've watched season one. Okay. Um, Fleabag is about a woman called Fleabag. I don't know her. I'm being lazy today. Um, we follow her dysfunctional life. Have you guys seen it? Yes. Yeah, seen parts, not all of it. I've right. seen both series and the original stage show that it comes from. Damn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Follow Fleabag, and we we follow her. Uh, she's very frank and very open, and we see her go through boyfriends and how she interacts with her family. And I just find it really brazen and really funny. I can see why people love this show. It's just it's very different. Yeah. Um, conversations are just about everything, and I love the most thing. The thing I love the most is um, the relationship between her and her sister. <laughs> it's generally very funny. Um, some of the stuff that they say is just George openly like, wow, you went there. Um, and plus, I just find out, I just find her guinea pig really cute. And also, um, I just found that her best friend's death at the end of episode one description is really funny. Because she got stuck in a bike and then ended up going into a car, which went into another bike. It's really funny. Um, <laughs> but it also has a lot of heart as well, as Tom will back me up as well. I like how it has moments of, you know, drama as well. These are real, they, it does feel like ways real people would talk to each other. Yeah. And the way she keeps cutting away every five minutes, every five seconds, so the camera's quite funny. It just surprises you at every turn. Plus, the cast is really good as well. And Olivia Coleman. I love Olivia Coleman as a stepmom. She is generally. She's good. She should have been Doctor Who. She's an Uber bitch. <laughs> She's so she good. She's not wrong. She's an Uber bitch. So passive aggressive. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's all about the show in real life. <laughs> Uh, I like Olivia Coleman. She's nice. <laughs> Coleman just stick a finger in your face and you ask for an autograph or something in the past life. <laughs> now, Olivia Coleman, from what I've heard, is a very nice woman. And every time I've seen her being herself, she's lovely. But that character is an utter cow. Well, i got a good story about Olivia Coleman. Um, one time my friend just uh, saw me, uh, we went past her and went, is that Olivia Coleman? She turned around, obviously, and she just went, Oh, hey, and my friend just went, can I have a hug? And she went, yeah, sure, and came up and gave my friend a hug. <laughs> and next thing you know, Olivia Coleman's giving me one too. And I said, yeah, oh, I love you from Peep Show onwards. And she went, well, thank you. Keep up the support. I really appreciate the support. And um, <laughs> this was like 10 years ago when she was only really known for Peep Show. And now you see where she's gone. Yeah. It's ridiculous, isn't it? She's our best act- one of our best actresses. She's a BAFTA Oscar winner. She's in The Crown. And- she has popped up in so many things. It's insane how far she's got, yeah. And, like, I'm so proud of her because I was singing her praises from 20 years ago when I first watched Peep Show. You know? Yeah. 
<laughs> and no one knew who Olivia Coleman was then. Only Peep Show fans. And to see her now, she's a national treasure. And I'm very immensely proud. Um, and I've been told Moriarty's in it. I haven't quite finished. Andy Scott. Yeah. Yes, he's in the second series as what was weirdly classed as the sexy priest. Yes. I, I can't and wait. He's, he is very good. He's very funny. He's not what you'd, you'd expect a priest to be. He's sarcastic. He tells people to F off. He's really good. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. And it's got the guy from Outnumbered in it as well. Um, Q Dennis, yes. Yeah, and now I, I, I uh, what was the last one I watched? It was the retreat, the yoga retreat. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> a good one. <laughs> and me and my wife have been screaming slut all day long. If you haven't <laughs> seen the episode, have you seen the episode, Troy? I've seen the episode, I've seen it because no one told me yeah. about it. So I watched it, it made me laugh so hard. <laughs> we <just> the background, <laughs> slut. <laughs> They just, I mean, this woman is amazing. I mean, she's taking selfies of her vagina to send to her ex boyfriend. It's oh, just everything. It surprises you, but not goes over to the, the top too much. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You don't know what's going to happen next. It will change mood, but it feels like it, uh, it's earned it. Yeah. It's a damn good show. Yeah. But I mean, the only thing, I'm, the the only thing I'd say, Tom? Yeah. That's how I've, seen, I've heard some really good things about it, but I've never seen it. I need to watch it fully properly. Well, the thing is, right, the TV show is actually quite toned down from the stage show. The stage yeah. show was a lot worse <laughs> in oh, terms that. of <laughs> where they went with it. <laughs> oh, jeez. There we go. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. But that's a one-woman show. That's just her on stage describing what all the other characters are doing. Go watch it. Well, Phil, I am quite annoyed at the actress because she was being very. She played along with the Doctor Who rumors because she was meant to be the Doctor, and she played along with it. And everyone thought, "Hold on a second, you're the next Doctor," and she wasn't. Yeah, but can you blame her for doing that? That's fun to troll people sometimes. Yeah, no, yeah they, they all do it. <laughs> she did better than David Tennant about the fiftieth. I mean, he literally on numerous occasions nearly said something, and he even said. Oh, I nearly said something I shouldn't have there, which made it so blatantly obvious. Anyway, enough of that. Anyway, um, and my third choice is um, one that is at the start of the year where everybody was watching. It is Tiger King. Oh, Jesus. Ah, there we go. I mean, nay. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with your hatred of tigers or Americans, or whichever one you I have, I have no issue with tigers. Yeah, yeah, I have no issue with Americans myself. It's just that short. <laughs> Because Tiger King looks like Enzo Amore from NXT. Enzo Amore! Oh, okay. A subconscious thing, yeah. Enzo Amore! Oh, if you're God. watching Enzo, fuck you. Um, <laughs> I'm just Sorry, making a really long long list. Days. I would just fight. I've just got a long list of people. And that tall streak of piss called Big Cash. Yeah, okay, fuck you. I'm Big Cash. He's seven foot tall. And you're just a big seven inch dick, mate. Anyway, I'm just not going to get into them. Uh, just <laughs> crazy to think Carmelo is the talented one out of the three of them. I just Imagine that. Oh, my days. Imagine the first time seeing that. Oh, my God. Are you, are you holding on to that? Okay, cool. Right, we're moving on. <laughs> it's a documentary series about crazy people, and it can only come from America. God bless you, America. I'm glad I don't live there, but my God, your documentaries are amazing. Um, <laughs> do I need to go into what Tiger King is? I'm sure everyone's seen it. But no one is a good person in this. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right. I mean, there's, like, everyone... The, the, the thing I have with this show is... What's the name of the Tiger King himself? Yeah, if you don't know, I'm not watching Can't that. actually remember. I, I refuse to watch that show. Because <laughs> it looks like Enzo. I just can't be honest, like, it doesn't interest me one bit. What's his yeah, we know, we know the guy you mean. Yeah, we know what you mean. You know what you mean. Okay, okay that sounds like a porn star. Um, basically, because <laughs> Jan Zartic is getting attacked by Caroline Baskin. Yeah. Right. And um, But the one thing is, she's saying, oh, yeah, he's got tigers in captivity. Bitch, you've got the same thing. So she's a silly bitch. She most probably fed her dead husband to the tigers. 
There's a lot of suspicious things. Yeah, let, let, let's just put a disclaimer there that there is no evidence that she did this, and these are not the views of the Square Eye Syndrome podcast in general. And yes. if Ben's getting sued, he's getting sued on his own. Yes. Perfect. And I can say it, she fucking did it, and she knows she did it. So, hello, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a guy that marries staff as well, you know? It's really weird. Everyone in this show is a freak show, um, but I love it. It's glorious. It's just mental. There's no good people coming out of this. There's staff that get moved by targets. There's the arms. They go back to work for them. Just <laughs> this show. It's why I love America, but I'm also glad I don't live there. I'm not shooting down a whole country, but wow. yeah. yeah. Disclaimer, disclaimer, guys, disclaimer. <laughs> disclaimer, I don't care if this doesn't get big in America. I just feel that the country's insane. I, I, I love America, I love America, by the America. way, more about it. <laughs> but Trump is their president. That is only in America, okay? I love America for how crazy it is. Hey, look, but we yeah. can hardly talk. We've got Boris, Jesus. <laughs> I still take Boris today over Donald, or any American. So, that's Ooh. Agent Dream. And Tiger King on Netflix and Fleabag on BBC iPlayer and Netflix around the rest of the world. I'm done, right? Who's up next? That would be me. Okay. Off you go then, Tommy. Okay, so I'm going for... First one is a show that I'm quite sad got cancelled, even though it wasn't the best thing in the world. It's an American show called Instinct. Ooh. I don't know if you've heard yeah. of it. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> It's um himself because he likes it that much, right? Instinct. Yeah. Okay. So it's if you were a fan of um, things like Sherlock and Elementary yeah, yeah. and that kind of thing, it's along the same lines basically. It's um it's an American guy who is a professor. You introduce to him. He's a professor of basically uh, psychology, but more specifically criminal psychology. In America, in New York. Yeah. And um, so he tell basically he's known by the outside world as Professor Psychopath because his speciality is talking about the mentality of psychopaths. Okay. Similar in a way to Will Graham of being able to think yeah. like a psychopath. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a similar idea. And then you find out um, in the first episode, you find out that um, there's a murderer killing using the book that he wrote about psychopaths as his basis, which is why he gets called in by this American, by this New York detective to help because he might have some insights into how it's all done. Yeah. Yeah. You then find out as the episode goes on that actually this guy is far more than he appeared because he's actually ex CIA. He's not just a professor. He's used to work for MI5. He's worked for the CIA. He is basically has all these clandestine people he can go to, including one guy called Julian, who's brilliant and appears through the whole series. And essentially it's... I don't know... I'm bringing up another show that I'll bring up one day properly. Do you ever watch the show Castle? Yeah. With the writer who's following the police? My mum loves that show. It's a bit like that, but this guy has more experience than Castle. He understands the game a bit more beforehand. Uh, Castle's more aloof in it. It's It's a bit like... Yeah. But it's almost exactly the same thing of this detective goes, I don't want anything to do with this guy after this case. And he manages to wheedle his way in to be used in loads of cases. And that basically it runs for two series. Um, It's really good. The main actor in it is a guy called Alan Cumming. Oh, Alan Cumming, yes. He's an amazing British actor. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. And I know I talked about... Dirty surname. Yeah. I know I talked about this last week and it's going to sound like it's going to become my thing of controversial issues yeah. but he was the first openly gay main character on American TV serial primetime TV like in a serious documentary where the show focused on him it's the first time a gay character was put at the center and I just I like that as an idea because it shows that we're moving on in the world but also it's a brilliant character anyway um yeah. as long as the character's good that's all I care about yeah it's not the best show in the world elementary is better castle is better but it's good and it's enjoyable it's based off of um a book called murder games which was james patterson who wrote the alex cross books things like that 
Oh, that's right. He's yeah. got a good. He's got a good basis for where it starts from, yeah. and the first episode is very true to the book, which is good. And then they've gone off in their own directions, which is great because they're not restricted by that. But again, it's a little bit of kind of odd couple working well together thing. Yeah. But it's nice and it's good. I mean, the thing that made me laugh is I watched one episode of this with a friend of mine, and in this in this episode, he goes, he, uh, Alan Cumming and the woman, I can never remember her name, who plays the main female character, um, who is the policewoman, have to go undercover in a sex club. And so in order to be undercover, she pretends to be Australian and he pretends to be Scottish. Now, yeah. anyone who knows Alan Cumming knows that he is Scottish. So it's not exactly a stretch for him. And my friend was sitting watching it and he went, I can't watch this anymore. That's the most unconvincing Scottish accent I've ever heard and walked <laughs> off. I was I just saw something going, You're a fool. This is the, actually the only time in the whole show he's speaking with his own accent. <laughs> but he so has a really good American accent. Play. He does a perfect American accent. So my friend was like, Oh, it's a terrible British accent. He's like, Jesus Christ. But yeah, it's it's a silly show. It got cancelled after the second series, which yeah. I think is a shame because they were building up to new things for the third series. Yeah. And then they just went, no. I I don't know what the number, what the reasons were. I don't know what the numbers were. I know Alan Cumming has said that he'd have happily done another sh- another series of it. Yeah. But there'll be a million and one reasons why syndication doesn't happen. And um, it's a shame because I kind of hope it might get picked up again because I think it has legs. It's possible. Now that, now that, like I say, Elementary and Sherlock are both gone, if you're a fan of this type of thing, it's the only one that was out there in the last couple of years. How can you watch it? Um, it's available on Sky. Okay. At the moment. I'm sure it will come to Netflix or Amazon Prime at some point. I don't know if it has yet, but at the moment it's available on Sky Atlantic. So now TV for people who have now TV. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's that's my first pick. It's enjoyable, and I'd recommend if you like sort of investigation stuff, it's a good fun watch. But for you, what does it do different from other shows of the same kind of thing? What makes it stand out? Um, I suppose the main the main difference for me is that the guy who's kind of the outsider actually has a huge amount of experience. Whereas normally with the outsider, it's they don't actually know a huge amount. Like Watson, he's an army surgeon, yeah, but he has no idea about investigation originally. He learns as he goes. And when you've got a character like that, characters like that, they kind of, they get better, but they're yeah. learning from the master the whole time. Whereas he's actually got more experience than the person who's the experienced person in this show. He's just hiding the fact that he's got it. And, like, he can take brilliant shortcuts because he's got the CIA on call. His dad works for the CIA as well. And it's like... <laughs> so it's, it's, it's different because the dynamic is similar to a number of other shows, but it's tweaked just enough to make it interesting. Also, he's neurotic as well, which is always helps with a character. Give him little quirks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do not fuck with the CIA, basically. Uh, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, they'll tap, they'll tap everything in your house. Don't, don't mess with. Them. And yeah, including, your, uh, including your ass. Well, in, the first, in the first episode, he just looks like a skinny professor, and then somebody attacks him, and he just takes them down completely. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, the first series has Whoopi Goldberg in it, and she's very funny. Oh too. my god, Whoopi Goldberg's in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she plays his book oh, editor. Right. She's trying to get him to write a second book. That's like one of the subplots is he's being badgered by Whoopi Goldberg to write a book about what he's doing with the police. Whoopi Goldberg, where have you been? My God, she's such a good actress. Love Whoopi Goldberg. She's got her own show now. She doesn't have to work She's got her own little talk show. I bloody want her to work. Whoopi Goldberg, get back to work, love. Yeah, but she doesn't have to. Yeah, she doesn't have to do that at all. (laughs) She should share a gift with the world. Anyway, I've just been selfish. Next pick. Anyway, yeah. So, moving on. My second pick is kind of breaking one of our rules a bit because this is only on a streaming service and only on one streaming service. 
and is going into a subject that I know all three of us are fans of, but you're probably going to hate me for bringing it up. I brought the drag race in. I think anything's safe after this point. And actually, what anime cities, so anything goes now, mate. I don't think you're going to dislike it. I think you're going to be annoyed that I went here. Okay. So. Your porn video. um, (laughs) Dear, dear. All right. So I was watching on Monday evening. I watched WWE Money in the Bank. Ah, yes, you're bringing it. That's not what I'm bringing. That's not what I'm bringing up. Oh, okay. That down. You annoying. During that, it advertised. A show that was coming on next called Undertaker The Last Ride, oh, chapter yeah. one. So I watched Undertaker The Last Ride. My God, if you were a fan of wrestling, this is so worth the watch. It is no. so good. And it's only, and I've, there's only been one episode so far. There's another four to come. And basically, so, come on. So basically, this is always going to happen, wasn't it? We were going to talk about a wrestling show. Yeah, one, I was going to bring up last year. I said, nah. I'll wait. Yeah, I don't think it's a bad thing. But my question is, does he do loads of wedgie bombs on people? Not that I wedgie saw. Bomb. The last ride, it's a manoeuvre. <laughs> That's to be honest. It's like a power bomb, but he does a wedgie. This Puts, one. Yeah. Wedgie yeah, bomb. well, no, he doesn't do wedgie bombs. It's uh, basically, it's a farm. I mean, I think the fact that this documentary is coming out really does signal that The Undertaker is coming is very much in his own mind coming to the end of his career because it's a very human look at yeah. a character that has been supernatural for forever. Yeah, because we don't very... really don't know a lot about him because he's always in character. He doesn't do interviews Precisely. as much. This, kind of... this, this is a man who believes in keeping kayfabe, yeah. kayfabe and yeah. so doesn't break it and hasn't broken it very often. Yeah. And, um, but this, he basically agreed in 2017 to let a film crew follow him around, going into what he thought was going to be his last WrestleMania. So yeah. it's very much, it's leading up to WrestleMania 27. I think, no, not WrestleMania 27. It's leading up to WrestleMania 31, where he lost to Roman Reigns. Wow. And it's the lead up to that. And you can see in the whole episode, very much, he's, he's already decided he's retired. This is his final match. But it's following him. It's the interaction. You see him and Reigns kind of hugging and sitting down in a bar chatting to each other about life on the road, stuff like that. Just how respected the man is. Saudi Arabian. I'm going to take some Saudi Arabian money. We're going to try to do a tax <laughs> act. Yeah, don't. That's like Saudi money. Oh, my God. I get stars is still watching my documentary. And, wow, I'm going to come back at SummerSlam. He ain't done. No, he's probably not done the. He, the, the fact he's doing, doing this documentary suggests to me that uh, next rest, next year's WrestleMania probably will be his last because he's he's humanizing himself now. Is it the reason why he got rid of his wife and went out with Michelle McCool? Is that really, they don't they don't cover that? No, no, Seems but I'm trying to make it already with Michelle McCool before this documentary started. Yeah, it tells how uh, Michelle McCool made the sorrow uh, tattoo on his neck go away. I'm doing really inside now. I do apologise. I'm going to let Tom explain this show. I'm making wrestling, uh, wrestling references. Sorry, Tom. Right. So, the thing that's interesting about it is how human this guy is and how scared he is. So, it's kind of talking about the fact that it was back at WrestleMania 27 was the first time he actually thought to himself, you know what, my body is not healing as quickly as it used to. I can't do this as much as well as I used to. Which, if you're a fan of wrestling, you know, comes off the back of two match of the year WrestleMania matches with Shawn Michaels and a cracking match with the with Triple H that year in WrestleMania 27. WrestleMania 28, he had an amazing match again with Triple H inside Hell in a Cell. WrestleMania 29, he had an amazing match with CM Punk. Yeah. So uh. it's so he was thinking three years before really he started to drop off a bit before he lost to Brock Lesnar. He was thinking to himself, I'm not able to do this as well as I used to and so it's interesting that how long ago he actually started thinking that just as, and then it says that it, go, it goes into a lot of detail about that Brock Lesnar match and the fact that he got concussed Yeah, and that he says I can't actually remember anything since about 4 o'clock on the evening afternoon of yeah. the day of Wrestlemania 
And here is the biggest statement, considering Brock Lesnar is an amazing wrestler, but not a good human being. And Vince McMahon is the boss. When The Undertaker came back up, back through the curtain after that match at WrestleMania, they said that he was smiling and looked like he'd drunk an entire bottle of Jack Daniels. He didn't know where he was. He was going, hey, how you doing to people? Like, yeah, I... Not even sounding like himself. So he was then rushed to hospital, got out of the ambulance, and a car pulled up behind him, and Vince McMahon, whilst WrestleMania was still going, and Brock Lesnar jumped out. They were the first people at the hospital. Vince wow. walked off of WrestleMania. WrestleMania 30. Vince walked out of the show because yeah. he wanted to make sure that Undertaker was okay. And even then, you hear story that Undertaker was taking the piss out of Vince, even though he wasn't properly with it. And things like that. And they were having a laugh and a joke together. And you see their relationship. This is a guy that Vince obviously knows he can put a lot of faith in. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, it's like I say, the story is that basically he has the match with Roman Reigns. And he's talking about kind of end, giving up, finishing. And Michelle McCall's like, I'm really happy he's retiring now. Now, obviously, as a wrestling fan, you know that he's still going, what, four years, four years on from that. Unfortunately, I would like him to retire now because it's getting quite sad watching him in well, the ring. I, I enjoyed the Boneyard match, so don't knock it. Besides <laughs> the Boneyard, though, it has been quite sad watching him trundle through matches with Triple H and Goldberg in Saudi Arabia, dude. The, is... the Goldberg match was terrible, but that wasn't The Undertaker's fault. No, yeah, but he, the fault. he needs to retire, though. That's the thing. He, he needs should... to retire with the right match, and he hasn't done that yet. Anyway, that's not the point. <laughs> so, I mean, right, he should have just done it right there. Perfect time. Anyway, but skipped, keep going. But one of the reasons he didn't, because he's talking about the two things that are really interesting is just how close his relationship is with Triple H. And he's saying that the year after he lost to Brock, he actually, he's walking around, he was looking normal, everyone thought he was fine. But he had no confidence. He didn't think he could do it anymore. And Triple H sat down with him and said, you need to remember, you're the fucking Undertaker. Do you go out there and remind those people who the fuck you are? And he said, that was the kick I needed to go back into doing it properly. Then he had a pretty good match with Bray Wyatt that year. Yeah, he did. Not... And that was hampered by the fact that Bray had broken his ankle earlier in the day and wasn't able to do half the spots they planned to do. Yeah. But anyway, so they come to the Roman Reigns match and he's saying he's, well, he's the kind of person he either has to, he'll go out because he's dead or he'll go out having a match that's worthy of his legacy. And that's kind of the thing. He's looking, he has the Roman Reigns match and things went wrong in that match yeah. a couple of times. Um, and you see him after the match, he comes back and he's clearly content. He's happy to retire. He says to Vince, are you happy with that? And Vince went, yeah, I'm happy. And um, you see Michelle McCall saying, yeah, it's great. He's retiring and all that. And then they show you a short clip of next week's one where basically you've got Michelle McCall saying, if Vince asks him to come back, he's coming. And it's just like, that's the thing. Undertaker, as long as he, he, he obviously cares about the business because he's saying the things about like every time he gets in the ring, he's wondering whether he's stealing a spot from somebody who should be there. It's one of the younger guys. So he feels a lot of pressure to do well every time he gets in there because he doesn't want to steal a spot from somebody who should be there. But it's clear, you watch the video of him backstage, everybody loves him. Nobody wants him to stop until he wants to stop. And it's just really interesting how, how he definitely comes back and all of that, I'm sure will come up in the next episode. But it's definitely, if you're a wrestling fan, if you like The Undertaker, this is a definite worth the watch. And that is all I can say. It's and quite can... emotional and it's brilliant. Nice. I can just see him going to the hospital and them sitting up like a zombie and be like, nope, <laughs> kick up. <laughs> Not the uh, right. <laughs> no, good show, though. Good show. I will go watch it later. I'm sure my wife will be. I recommend it, yeah. Like you, Tom. Thank you. Um, cool. Okay. So that's on the WWE Network. It in is, case yes. You... Everyone knows who The Undertaker is, even non-wrestling fans. My mum knows who he is so yeah best character ever basically best gimmick ever well like, that, but that's because of the man you could have given that gimmick to a thousand wrestlers 
and there's maybe two who would have done it right. And yeah. it just so happened that Mark Calloway was one of them. Best entrance of all time, always. <laughs> I, I would love to see him. One more joke. I want to see Randy Orton versus Undertaker in the who can take the longest to get to the ring match. That would be fun. Maybe the extra to uh, No, no, no. Undertaker wins that all day long, even yeah, he if he starts he at the end of the end. Though, end. Always. Even if he starts <laughs> next to the ring, he's still going to win. Okay. Maybe the big show, because he's a fat fuck. But anyway, right, moving on. Um, Troy, you're up next, boy. Uh, okay. So, uh, first up. Oh, All right. First up, I got Supernatural. Carry on my way with oh, yes, Supernatural. There we go. <laughs> one of the best shows of all time. This is not this is the first one on my list. Oh, boy. It's, it's a it's a it's a goat list. The first goat list on my list, my two list. Okay, so Come. supernatural. I know you guys have seen it. I know you guys have seen it. Tom, you seen it. It's Tom <laughs> Well, I've seen some it's, of it. It's better than Charm, it. so that's a good start. <laughs> I was like, damn. Tom is like, Tom is like, nah, I can't answer. Oh. Okay, so I think no, 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 I've, I've, I've seen some of it. <laughs> it's better than Charm. I think me and Tom can agree on that. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll see, I'll see you guys. That Japanese show that you shat on two weeks ago is better than Charm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on, mate. Hey. No, we're gonna get that's this later. It. We're gonna get this later. We're not gonna do that right now. Okay, so oh, anyway, go ahead. Okay, so supernatural. Okay, there we go. One of the best shows of all time. Still going, still ongoing. I in can't the 15th season. Yes, yeah, amazing. I lost. Oh, so damn good. Okay, so it's going to this show. Yes, because I remember the first six years it was like must watch television. <laughs> TV, yeah. It feels like every time there's a new season now, no one talks about it anymore. I remember the first six years. Every year it came back on, it would get the front cover of a sci-fi magazine here or a fantasy magazine. People would talk about it. And now, it feels like the last decade, people don't talk about Supernatural anymore. So how has it been for you? You've obviously seen all of it. Yeah, yeah. So literally, uh, <laughs> basically Sam and Dean, they're fighting God now, actual God at this point. Oh, lovely. <laughs> the last, the last thing talk about Freeman God. will fuck them up. Oh, wait. That's a, uh, yeah. All right, go for God, God's called Chuck in the show. It's the most random names. They call him Chuck. He's like a literally a script writer. A writer who writes people's stories, people's lives. Yeah. That's how he, that's how he gets his power. And um, in the show, he's got a sister called Mara. <laughs> Mara. She's basically the darkness. The darkness. Because they've got three main um, sources of power in the show. You've got God, which is Chuck. Amara, which is the darkness. Then you've got the empty. The empty is where all the supernatural um, beings go. Like the angels, demons. Okay. So they go monsters like stuff in purgatory. They all go there. Dracula, vampires, all stuff. So yes, yeah. yeah, so they all go down there. So, um, so basically, it's basically because of rock band. Sorry, I just got the uh, God. just walking to my head. Sorry, continue. <laughs> I'm just I'm doing everything today. Keep going. Push on. No, no, no. So um, basically, it's created by Eric Kripke, one of the best creators of all time. Yo, this guy's got pies and everything, almost everything on TV. Anything supernatural based or anything under, under that kind of banner, sci-fi, he's, he's been on it. Quick K. So um, everyone, if everything is done, it's gone on for a while. So you know you can trust this guy. So as soon as he touched supernatural, it was gonna be a hit. As soon as he touched it, I remember me and my little sister watching it like the first episode. Oh my days, like a, a ghost episode. And I was like, this show is so good. And that's when they were, little, they were like baby faces, Sam and Dean, like Jerry Padalecki and Jen Snackles. They're literally baby faces. And from a young age, they were like taught by their dad in the show, which was Jeffrey Dean Morgan, which is Negan. And when I was walking dead, he's the dad. Yeah. 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 So he's like the hunter. And basically his, their mom died from getting possessed by a demon, a crossroads demon. And ever since then, they've been had the urge to fight um, supernatural creatures. So that's basically their premise, their um, claim to fame, as it were, because they basically stopped crossroad demon. That was the first um, kind of real threat they kind of stopped, really. In terms of like big bads. Um, but then after okay. that, it's, they start taking down death. That's where it gets to like, the big stuff. And you're like, you're like, oh my, they're just going to get bigger and bigger. They go into purgatory. They stop all these creatures. Um, God created this person. God created that person. But at the same time, they never actually saw God. They were like, alluding to him. 
and then all of a sudden Chuck would appear throughout the seasons. So at this point, God is basically a villain, but he's the villain. That's what people don't mean. He's the actual villain like, in this in this show. Because like yeah. basically he wants all these, these creatures to love him. He's like, yes, love me, love me. At the same time, Sam and Dean are the only kind of people who are against him. They're actually fighting God because everyone's kind of giving up. They're like, okay, whatever. I can't stop God. God's God. Comes up into it. But um, at the same time, the devil, devil's son, is helping them as well. So it gets, it gets crazy. This show, this show gets crazy. That's all I'm going to say. Um, so it's a CW show. Um, so at first it was kind of like another another station when it's gone to CW. It's obviously it's kind of been toned down a bit because it's gone, gone on CW now. But um, but it's still a good show. It's a decent show to be fair. It's 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 awesome. It's awesome. But yeah, but what you, what do you remember of the show, um, Tom? What do you remember? What's the good bit you um, see? To be honest, I never really got properly into it. I don't. I don't think yeah. I gave it enough of a chance. Yeah. So what did you see? Um, what what turned you off? What turned you off it? I don't know. There were other things that kind of had my attention at the time. Yeah, but I'm sure. Yeah, was it just come around that time? It came out, and there's a lot of competition back in the time when it first started. Supernatural. It had a lot of competition. Yeah, yeah, tons of shows. All all I can sort of remember is that I kind of half watched a couple of episodes, and thought, "No, there's other things I'd rather be watching right now. I'll come back to it." I didn't think it was bad. Yeah. I just it. I thought I'll come back to it, and I just never have. Yeah, <laughs> so. it's true though. At first, when you actually watch it, you probably think like, "Oh, it's just a run-of-the-mill supernatural show. People going around killing monsters." But I mean, same, I'm, time... a big, I'm a big fan of supernatural stuff, like um, True Blood stuff like that. I actually, even uh, though it was completely hammy, I loved it. True but... Blood, and that's the show that got me out of it. As soon as they started talking about fairies, I was, I was out. True Blood <laughs> still better than Charmed. I oh, can't. Right. Oh, come on, hey, stop. Yeah. Ben, stop it. Stop it. Supernatural. I yeah, remember it. Yeah, yeah. It's Buffy with balls. Nothing's better than Charm, Ben. Stop it. Nothing's better than Charm. Stop Buffy, Buffy is, it's Buffy with balls, Supernatural, and I think it's a good show. That's what yeah. I've seen of it. <laughs> yeah, so at the same time, it's just talking about alternate dimensions as well. So God's created other dimensions as well. Chuck. Yeah. At this point, so it's, bringing, it's bringing that kind of element to it as well, like the, the sci-fi element, the alternate dimensions and stuff like that. So you've got a different kind of Dean and Sam throughout all the different universes. It's funny. There was an episode where, because <laughs> Dean and Sam, they always wear flannel shirts. They're looking all, they're always looking rough. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> at, at the same time, there's another universe of Dean and Sam, and they're wearing all these. Um, hey, the... What have you got against flannel shirts? Ah, no, I've never got nothing against. Well, I wear flannel shirts at times. I'm about to say you're a Daniel Bryan fan, but if anyone is a fan of Daniel Bryan, less oh, Daniel, Daniel Bryan fan as well. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, no, I got nothing against flannel shirts. That's for sure. Hey, I'm a flannel shirt guy. I've got some right now. I'm looking at it hanging up on my wall. But at the same time, there's another show. <laughs> they basically rock up in this this beetle. The other versions of Sam and Dean are so funny. They're rocking up in this beetle, and they got you know they wear the sweater over the neck, the the rich man style. Punch it. Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> and they looked at each other and they was like, "What the heck?" And then literally got sucked right right up for the port again. So there's little elements of that. There's little comedy in there as well. So it's kind of like a dark fantasy, dark kind of comedy at the same time. It's, it's a mixture of both. Because you've got dark elements in the show, but at the same time, it's a strong comedy element in the show as well to kind of keep people entertained as well. But um, yeah, it's a solid show. I say everyone watch Supernatural at some point. Watch it. Check it out. Where can we watch that, Troy? Huh? Where can we watch it? So it's a CW show, but at the same time, if you haven't got the CW, you can watch it on like sci-fi. Because you can watch it anywhere almost. Um, Sci-fi, it's been on E4 before in the UK. So there's a lot of places you can watch it, but mostly sci-fi. Station sci-fi, you can watch it on. Okay. That's the main place you can watch it. Um, okay. Yeah. So, balls. I should tag them. A few balls. I guess what is coming next. Oh, it's, it's time, people. Everyone rejoice. Everyone it better not rejoice. be. Charles. Oh, no. Charles, are you, baby. Are you fucking serious? Oh, gee. Troy. Yeah, gentlemen, I'm just going on to mute now. <laughs> Troy, hold on. The next sound you hear is my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it. Stop it, man. Stop it. Hey, the greatness of charm, Joe. Hey. <laughs> the amount of, like, hey. I'm cool. Cool. Go on. No, no, no. Let, let's be fair. Let him. Yeah, let's, let's be fair. Hey, let's be fair. Let's, 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 let's pay homage to the greatest show of all time. Come on, guys. 
Yeah, so explain to us what is Charmed. Other than okay, here we go. Let's, let's, do, let's do a quick overview. Tides, Troy's wet dream. Let's go. Go on. <laughs> okay, we're going to do a little quick um, synopsis for you guys. Okay. I'm just going to go to see. 1998, Charmed, the greatest show of all time. To the effects, the visuals, yo. Oh, my days. The fireballs. Any, any, any kind of show that uses fireballs in their show, that Charmed did it first, yo. That's what I'm going to say. Charm did it first. The storytelling, the drama, the supernatural mixture. Right. Yeah, what time did you start drinking today? I can't wait. start sniffing paint. We'll Which drink it. Hey, I'm fully sober. Hey, let's just get that straight right now. Yeah. Hey, anyone can watch this show sober. Don't, don't worry about these guys. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Okay, so let's get back into this. Okay. To the great show. To the GOAT. Let's get back into the show guys sniffing paint. Uh, <laughs> let's get back into the GOAT. All right, okay. So it's an American fantasy drama television series created by Constance Emberg. Oh, she's amazing, by the way. Uh, produced by Aaron Spelling, because he got this um, show off the ground. And Brad Kern's the showrunner of the show. So, the series was originally broadcast by the, the basic Warner Brothers for eight seasons from October 7th to 1998. Um, up until 2006. So, that's why I've uh, long it's been running. It's been for a while. So, it's been running for eight, eight seasons. 178 episodes. 178 episodes, guys. That's 176 episodes too many. 178. 176. 178, guys. Come on. That's how great, that's how big the following of this show is, by the way, guys. Because it's popular it doesn't mean it's good, bro. No, 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 it's just amazing. That's that's why. This, this is a show that um, is on Merit. That's because you, you've watched it on about 70 million televisions. That's why. Hey, anyone who's got E4, like a Channel 4, they know what I'm talking about, Charm. They put it on there all the time because they know how great this show is. This show is on full rerun. That's how great it is. Hey, so let's get back into this. All right, let's do it. Okay, so the series now, it follows the trio of sisters known as the Charmed Ones. Yeah, the charm door, you're the most powerful good witches of all time, guys. Power free. Let me know you hear dog. Power free or set us free. Power free or set us free. You know where this where it comes from. This show. Yeah, that's just a quote. Any witch show that you've seen, that like even the present, the past, the present, this show did it first. Show. So let's get back into this little synopsis here. They use the power free to protect innocent lives from evil beings such as demons, warlocks, because they've got some very notable warlocks in here as well. Um, there's one called Barbarous, who's he's literally like the, the backdrop for like literally the whole show. He's like this dream demon almost. He can like basically go in your dreams and just affect you. So literally, he's <laughs> he's one of the best characters in the show. He's he's a great actor. The guy who plays him. I can't his name, but he's great. So show. basically a crap free Kruger. <laughs> he's amazing, pretty good. Hey, it's obviously because they, they're kind of restricted. They can't go that dark. But... Hold on, hold on. It's a fantasy show where it was more about babies and their life trying to get a more. No, 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 no. That was later on. Come on, come on, come on. Man. That was towards the end. That was towards the end. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Element. <laughs> so that's towards the end. But when they were in full flight, it was epic. Um, so each of them have got their own kind of powers. So you had Prue Halliwell, who was that by um Shannon Doherty, anyone from that now to an old fame. Everyone knows who she is. Everyone knows who she is. Um, so she, she she had the power of like um, telekinesis. She can move stuff with her mind. She had the power to act. <laughs> <laughs> she's one of the greatest actors of all time. And then you got Holly Marie Combs, who was Piper. She could literally freeze stuff. Rodney Piper. Yeah, powerful. This guy. So the power to freeze stuff. And then the other of the third sister, which is Alyssa Milano. Mm, Alyssa Milano. Yes. But we get back into this show. Alyssa Milano. She had the power. Of foresight, so she had like kind of like a um, how would you say precognition that was her ability? Couldn't have been that good because she signed up for the show. <laughs> that her career be fucking ruined after she <laughs> hey, people, Do you hear this? Do you hear this, guys? Do you hear this? Like this mitchell All right, oh my god, what did you think was going to happen? When you Anyways, I want to happen. continue the greatness of the goat. We're going to continue this. How how this quaint is witchcraft in the goat? Yeah, it makes sense, but let's keep going. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's keep going. Uh, okay, so uh, they're living in San Francisco. So that like, literally, there they got this massive house left from like their their mum from like years ago. So this house has like a, a magical um value to it. And there's a book. You know what I'm so this book gives them all the spells in there as well. So what's the name of the actual book? There's a special name for it, but but literally, they're, they're all the spells are in this book. All the demons that they've um killed and they're about to kill are in this book. And then the kind of thing that they need to know. It's in this book as well. And at the same time, they know how to do spells. They find out along the way how to like create their own spells at the same time. Um, they've got other rocking villains like the triad. The triad is like their version of the power of three. You know what I'm saying? So there's, there's that, that element to it as well. So they're constantly at, at odds with each other. And 
yo, this show is a cult following. That's, they say it's a cult following, but at the same time, it's it's more than that. It's not even a cult following. It's like a following in general. You know what I'm saying? So as soon as the um, episode called Something Wicked This Week Come... Did you say cunt following? Okay. Yeah, I agree. Oh, my flipping gosh. Man. The disrespect. The amount of disrespect these guys. Oh, my God. But anyway. Okay. Go on, go on. Go on. What did you say, man? Go on. Uh, Tom, you remember the feedback we had where people said Troy talks to doesn't talk a lot. I think we should revise he that. He's talking too much. <laughs> now, I'm talking about the goal. So I'm talking about the goal. So much about so much little thing of inconsequential shit. Oh my gosh. Talk about the <laughs> of, of charm, man. You've got to talk about it. It's just like. You talk about tax or, tax or Love Island or anything. <laughs> Love Island, oh, how dare you disrespect your Love Island? I mean, you know, at least get wrestling fans of the Undertaker thing. What the fuck uh, are you doing? No, Charmed is the one, yo. Hey, I'm gonna continue uh, praising Charm. Come on, I'm gonna continue, guys. Come on, let, let me let me let, it. let the great, let the greatness let breathe. Him, let him speak. Let the greatness breathe. Come on, come on now. Come on, Troy. We'll hear okay. you out before we throw. So. <laughs> you can't throw out greatness, man. We're always gonna be here. Come on now. Yep. Okay, so the series has also received numerous awards and nominations, as you would expect. As you would expect, <laughs> it won awards. Come on, uh, one of the greatest of all time, as as you as you well know. Um, also, Charles become MTV does not count. I'm talking like yeah, Emmys. Get out of here with that. Okay, so also, it's a hey, pop culture references all by t- film, TV, hey, and the genre. Charmed owns it. Supernatural. Hey, Charmed owns the genre, yo. Hey, okay, video <laughs> games, board games. Novels, hey, it's got comic book. Oh my gosh, it's even got a reboot going on right now because that's how great we're doing. Like, you know, yeah, we can't let this, we can't let charm die. It, it ended so great. How many seasons going? So, we've got to bring this back. Oh, somehow. the other way of looking at it is they went, Oh my god, we did eight seasons of that. Let's reboot it for fuck's sake. We, we're oh. now going to go and be a Christian and remember to say sorry for everything we've ever done. No, 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 what are you talking about? No, 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 yeah, why don't we have tr- why don't we get a get? Why don't we get a, have a get together with all the fans, Troy? And then I could punch them all in the face. <laughs> nah, they ain't gonna punch me in the face, man. They'll be doing the spells, yo. The spells will be protecting them. Don't worry about it, yo. They, they're fine. They'll be fine. That's what? your cut the awards. <laughs> no, 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 no. So that's your cut the charm awards that Troy's talking about. Yeah, check, one, them all, check them awards out. Go on, check them out. Yeah, for, TV Guide Award. <laughs> okay, fuck that. That's not that's not prestigious, is it? Um, two International <laughs> Horror Guild Awards. Horror my ass. Teen Choice Awards. Oh my god. Wow. Hold on a minute. Tom, you're gonna love this one. Uh free wand awards, whatever that is for fairies. Um seven ratty awards. Seven ratty um, Yeah, and Holly Marine Combs from Best Science Fiction Lead Actress in 2003. I guess Sarah Michelle Geller was Unavailable to pick up her award. Uh, hey, that, that's, hey, that's what we need to know. Yeah, Charm is just one of the greatest shows of all time, guys. Hey, a Saturn Award. These are terrible. These aren't even famous hey, awards. The bro. amount of offshoots, the amount of pop culture references from this show is astounding. That's all you guys need to know. Hey, anyone who knows Charm, even this in the supernatural world in general, knows about Charm. How great it is. So, that's just my two picks right there. I had to pick two goats. The ultimate goat Charm that I saved to a last, as everyone knows. So yeah, that's me done. I'm now. <laughs> In more ways than one, that's you done, Troy. We're replacing you with a flipping plant next week. We'll get better coverage then. Um, oh, yeah, no, what I was going to say is, um, we. I think if we had spoken to a drunk guy, we would have got more coherent ramblings. <laughs> what do you mean? The, the great, the goat. Charmed, yeah? Okay. Oh, I'm so glad now you got it off your chest. I never want to hear the words charmed ever again on this podcast. <laughs> hey, you never know. You might hear it again. You never know. Oh, please, no. You a few updates or anything? <laughs> I think we should uh, check what he's going to bring up next time, Tom, to avoid that. <laughs> Just hey, to point out to you, Troy, in a cult TV top 100 shows of all, top 100 cult TV shows of all time, you're saying this is a goat, right? It's, it's the goat. Only made it's the top goat. 50. Oh, okay. this, this, the disrespect. That's why it's the disrespect that they're showing the charm. That they, everyone knows it's the goat. They know it in their soul, in their heart. You know. All above is paying you to try and get this reboot. <laughs> they don't pay me. No, they don't need to pay me. They don't pay me nothing. They don't need to. And and to the people that wrote to you, I'm the charmed. No one knows who you are anymore. So you can add yourself to a long list of people that I've pissed off over the last ten episodes. Oh wow! Long list now. Wow. 
Yeah, bring it. Anyway. <laughs> ben, don't disrespect this, this the charm faithful, yo. Don't do it. I'm not going to make it 2020 alive, am I? Right. <laughs> you, you, as Eric Young would say, you ain't going home. I'm already at home. <laughs> so I guess that's it then. And we're not going to ask Charm because no, no, no one has it on any stream platforms because it's. Oh shit. man, hey, if you Charm so, fans out there, yo, hey, rate this uh, episode, yo, rate this episode, show your love for Charm. That last twenty minutes of Troy babbling on about. Hey, what's the ratings go up? The ratings go go off the roof, mate. Can you watch Sabrina the Teenage Witch, please. <laughs> hey, Sabrina's fire. What are you talking about? And if it does get views, I'm still going to punch you in the face. Oh yeah, Sabrina, that's a good, that's a good one. Let's bring up that at some point, Sabrina. Charm. I just, Troy, I'd just like to say. Then the last 20 minutes, a little bit of my soul has died. <laughs> I feel like I've been Guatemala bathed for 20 minutes of charm. Oh my god. I, know how, I, I, I now know how it feels to be like a zombie. Thank you. <laughs> hey, don't worry. Don't, don't, don't thank me. Don't thank me yet. Don't worry about it. When you, when you watch the show again, oh, then, then you thank me. <laughs> yeah, Ru- so I brought up RuPaul again. Um, Tom's decided to go with the under, finally bring wrestling in, and you've decided to bring Charmed in. I think we've all broke the rules today this week. <laughs> God, God, yeah, but at least mine was a good documentary. <laughs> hey, goats, the goats, supernatural charm, they have to be done. Yeah. Supernatural, I will give you. Okay, let me change my joke now. Supernatural is Buffy with balls, but at least it's not fucking charmed. Done. All right. Right. Thank you. I hope they turn up at the end of the season and the Supernatural boys just beat the shit out of them. I don't <laughs> I don't say men should hit women, but this is the one time I'm going to let that go. Oh, wow. What? Disclaimer, guys. Disclaimer. That's the one time. I'm, 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 I'm dangerous this week. Right, okay. Right, we've got to go. All right. All right. Guys, uh, we're go- we are waiting for verification on Spotify, iTunes, and all the other platforms that we've assigned ourselves to. We are currently using Anchor, so please go and um, support us and share the links and everything. We're going to have... Oh, yeah, Ch- Tom, you want to announce our uh, email addresses for feedback? Oh, yeah. Completely forgot about that. We have um, square-eyed syndrome at outlook.com yep. and square-eyed syndrome at topmail.com <laughs> Excuse me. Nice. And square eyed syndrome 2020 at gmail.com. Yeah, nice. Maybe outdated by next year, but we love it really. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll update it next year. Yeah, we'll fine. update it, yeah. <laughs> cool. Right. Right. Good night and fuck everyone. That's goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. And kill it with fire. <laughs>